Waiting, trusting and hoping are intricately connected. Like golden strands interwoven to form a strong chain, trusting is the central strand because it is the response from my children that I desire the most. Waiting and hoping embellish the central strand and strengthen the chain that connects you to me. Waiting for me to work with your eyes on me is evident that you really do trust me. If you mouth the words I trust you while anxiously trying to make things go your way, your words ring hollow. Hoping is future directed, connecting you to your inheritance in heaven. However, the benefits of hope fall fully on you in the present. Because you are mine, you don't just pass time in your waiting. You can wait expectantly in hopeful trust. Keep your antenna out to pick up even the faintest glimmer of my presence. John 14.1 Don't let yourself be disturbed. Trust in God and trust in me. Psalm 27:14 Put your hope in Adonai, the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, put your hope in the Lord. It was Psalm 27, 14. Starting from Hebrews 6, verse 18. So that through two unchangeable things, in neither which God could lie, we who have fled to take a firm hold on the hope set before us would be so strongly encouraged. We have this hope as a sure and safe anchor for ourselves, a hope that goes right on through to what is inside, the parakahet curtain, where a forerunner has entered on your behalf, namely Yeshua, who has become a Kohen Gadol, High Priest, forever to be compared with Malkitazadek. Melchizedek. Psalm 110. This Melchizedek, King of Shalom, a Cohen of God, Ha Elion, Most High, met Abraham on his way back from the slaughter of the kings and blessed them. Also, Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Genesis 14:17-20. Now first of all, by translation of his name, he is King of Righteousness, and then he is also King of Shalom, which means King of Peace. There is no record of his father, mother, ancestry, birth or death. Rather, like the Son of God, he continues as a Kohen for all time. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the choicest spoils. Now the descendants of Levi, who became Kohanim, priests, have a commandment in the Torah to take a tenth of the income of the people, that is, from their own brothers, despite the fact that they too are descended from Abraham. But Melchizedek, even though he was not descended from Levi, took a tenth from Abraham. Also he blessed Abraham, the man who received God's promises, and it is beyond all dispute that the one who blesses has higher status than the one who receives the blessing. Moreover, in the case of the Kohanim, the tenth is received by men who die, while in the case of Mashadek it is received by someone who has testified to be still alive. <laughs>